the series Pimp My Windsurf Board, how to make my windsurf board last longer, episode two. Today I will teach you how to repair soft bags. If you want to skip directly to this part, go here. And secondly, why you should fix the problem in time. In order to understand why you should fix a soft deck, it's necessary to understand what happens inside the board if it gets soft. Right here, this is the foam core and this is the sandwich on top of it. And if the board gets soft, then this part, the foam core right under the sandwich, gets soft and eventually, when the problem is really bad, it also loses connection to the deck sandwich on top of it. And that's because this whole construction has to deal with all the force and pressure you put into it by stepping on it or landing on it. Let me simulate that for you. It takes quite a while. Well done, starboard. And that's the reason why the typical areas for a board to get soft are between the foot straps and in front of the front foot straps. Because that's obviously where we stand for pumping the board into planing when we're not in our straps. Now we learned that, we asked the question, why is it bad that the board is soft? I mean, you can still ride it, right? Well, the thing is that a soft deck absorbs the force and pressure you try to put into it. It's the same effect as running shoes where have a really soft sole and they want to absorb the pressure to, to uh, make your knees and ankles last longer. While on the board, the, this effect is not on purpose, on running shoes it is. So as you can imagine, this effect on a windsurf board is not a giant disaster. But I'm sure there will be some performance oriented windsurfers who say Oh my board is so soft, I'm not connected to it properly. I get planing much later than my friend. That's why he or she does all the sick stuff and I don't. There's actually a real downside of a soft windsurfing board deck especially when it's a bigger area. And to explain that, I need to give you some more information about the construction of a windsurf board. Okay, so this part is a little bit more complicated, so pay attention closely. So I made this highly complex model of a surfboard. This is the nose, this is the tail. And of course, we don't want this surfboard to snap, right? Obviously, this surfboard can snap in two directions, to the top, or to the bottom and it will if the construction is not right. Imagine this is a small chop, this blue lighter, blue stands for water and you're riding over the chop and the chop hits the nose from the bottom and the board permanently bends like this and the board needs to deal with the forces and that's done mainly by the sandwiches on the top and on the bottom. The foam core inside of it is just to hold the sandwiches in place. To make this more clear, I've built an even more complex model of a surfboard. This is the foam core, the air inside of it. This is the top sandwich and this is the bottom sandwich. And here's the nose of the surfboard, here's the tail. I know it's too thick, but for our purposes, this is perfectly fine. Okay, the surfboard bends in this direction. I do this on this model, unfortunately you can't see anything because it's an attack construction, but I'm trying to bend it like this, but it doesn't because the sandwiches take the forces. The top sandwich needs to take the pushing forces and the bottom sandwich needs to take the pulling forces. I mark this on my drawing, red is for the pushing forces and blue is for the pulling forces. In fact, a little bit of flex in a board construction is intended for performance purposes. But if the forces are too high, the lamination or sandwich can get damaged and eventually snaps. And let's take a closer look at this snapping topic. There are two options how a board can snap. Option one is this. The bottom sandwich can't take the pulling forces and snaps apart. And you can see this because the bottom sandwich ripped apart and the deck sandwich is still intact. But there's a second option, this one. The bottom sandwich is intact and the top sandwich is pushed together. And that's the case when the top sandwich can't take the pushing forces, but the bottom sandwich can take the pulling forces. But we also need to take into account that a board takes pulling forces on the deck and pushing forces on the bottom. This is our chop again, this is the board, foot straps and mast foot. 
And now we imagine we land on a small shop from a jump right here and the board bends like this. And then this happens, pulling forces on the deck, pushing forces on the bottom. So in the end we learn that a board needs to take pushing and pulling forces both on the deck and the bottom sandwich. And on an intact bottom and top construction, this is perfectly fine. As long as the board is constructed properly. <laughs> because as you can see, I can't make the board snap because the sandwiches are holded in place by the foam core and thus can take the pulling and pushing forces. Now let's think about what happens when a part of this sandwich is soft. I simulated that on my highly complex model by replacing a part of the cardboard by thinner paper which obviously bends easier. So let's assume this happens, pulling forces on the deck, pushing forces on the sandwich, but I try to bend it like this, but it doesn't work because it still can take pulling forces. But now let's do it the other way around, pushing forces on the deck and pulling forces on the bottom and this is what happens. A sandwich that isn't held in place by the foam core properly can't take pushing forces as well as it would if it was intact. So that's why a soft deck fables a snapping board. But of course this whole story is not as black and white as I just explained it. Let's go a little bit more into the practical aspects. Let's imagine the board is soft in this area. I know a board will never get soft in this area because this is the nose of the board but doesn't matter either. Okay, the board is soft in this area and thus can't take forces in this area as good as it would if it was intact and we're talking about pushing forces obviously. So let's say this area takes pushing forces, I can only estimate it, sorry about that, 30% worse than it would if it was intact. And we can imagine that's not a big deal. 30% worse, then this area needs to take the forces more, but doesn't matter so much. But let's say it gets softer and softer and the area gets bigger and the board is soft in all of this area. And all of this area takes the forces worse. Then as a consequence, this area and this area need to take more forces. And at some point the whole construction will not be able to take the forces anymore and get pushed so much together that it snaps. To make this more clear I'll give you two examples of how a compressed deck can look like. Now this is a kite board and as you can see it has this crack over the whole surface. And if you take a close look at this you can see that the lamination has been pressed together. That's why it goes into the board. Now due to the materials this board doesn't get soft, but instead it just deforms. I'll show you with this special tool. Look, this is the normal rocker curve, that's perfectly fine. But when I get here, you can see that this can't be the normal rocker curve. This is a deformed deck. And as Sherlock Holmes would have guessed right away, this is where the kite surfer steps on with his heel. So what happened here is the heel deformed the deck and that has a similar effect as a soft deck on a windsurf ball. The deck can't take the pushing forces as well as it would normally and thus favors this compression break. I don't know about that English but... Now for example two, I don't have a broken board unfortunately but I have my chalk like a real teacher does and I'll show you a typical issue and explain how it refers to what I explained to you. So it's quite a typical issue that you have a crack right here. Especially on boards you do a lot of jumps with, so freestyle and wave. Why is that? Because initially the soft area is here, right under the heel, and thus this area can't take the pushing forces so much anymore. So this rail area has to take them and that's why it gets compressed and this crack occurs. And on top of all of this there's another effect that can occur if it's really bad. The lamination gets damaged so much by the compression that it doesn't even take the pulling forces anymore. So this is our soft deck or on the kiteboard the deformed deck and this gets stressed so much that finally this happens. And now the board snaps in this direction really easily. So a soft or deformed deck favors the board to break in this direction 
in an early stage and if it's really bad it even favors it to break in this direction. Okay, all in all, after this quite long theoretical discourse, we've learned that a soft deck favors the board to break if it's a big area that is soft because it just weakens the whole construction of the two sandwiches on the foam core. Okay, now let's talk about how to repair the problem. All you need for this small operation is some random epoxy resin, a few shots, I don't know if that's the correct English expression, but that's what I found on the dictionary. A drill that has the same diameter as the tips of the shot. And then there's some extra that you don't necessarily need but that helps. It's some stuff that makes epoxy resin expand. I don't know what this is called exactly, this is really really old. But if you're interested in that, just google epoxy resin expanding stuff. You will find it for sure, you are smart. So what we do is basically really simple. First we locate the soft area, then we drill holes through the surface and you can imagine that that's not very deep but even if you go a little bit deeper don't worry it will be fine and take care that the holes are in about the same distance but this is just an optical aspect. Also it's possible to hide the whole operation afterwards with a little bit of paint. Now we suck the resin into the shots and inject it into the board. It might take some time for the resin to find its way through the foam, so don't pump too hard. Ooh! And leave the shot in the hole, because otherwise the resin will be pressed out. In some cases the pressure inside the board is so high that the shots get pressed out by it. Then just tape them to make them hold. So this is what it looks like. Before the resin can harden, we need to take into account one more thing. The resin will sink into the foam away from the area where we actually want to have it. And the simple thing we do about that is turn the board over to make the resin stay right under the deck sandwich. The next day we remove the shot. Super, super hard now. Nice. And all we have to do now is fill up the remaining holes with resin. Another day later we grind the unnecessary resin off. <laughs> That's probably a really bad English. And then if we like to, we use some paint to hide the whole repair. The great thing about that repair is that you can do it over and over again in case of a board getting soft again. You can even use the same holes to prevent the board to look like a Schweizer Käse. The only downside about the repair is that the board gets a little bit heavier every time you do this and I'm sure there are some performance oriented windsurfers who complain that Oh my board is too heavy! I can't do the mad tricks! For real dude! Get your ass up and work on your skill! Alright guys, that's how you repair a soft deck and as I said you should do this in time because a soft deck is a ticking time bomb I don't know if that expression exists in English, but you know what I mean. Thanks for watching. See you in episode 3. For real, dude! Get your ass up and work on your skill!